didn't have a white in my set, so I picked one up recently. I'll be using these little ceramic plates, a few brushes, and I picked up some painter's tape. These are the thumbnails I prepared, and the colors I'm choosing to start out with are ash yellow, ash blue, burnt sienna, and white. These thumbnails are taken from a show I binge watched recently, two seasons in a very short period of time. <laughs> And um, it's called Raised by Wolves. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. If you're a fan of science fiction, you should love it. And even if you're not, I think you would like it a lot. It's very interesting. Now, since these are very small thumbnails, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty. These aren't really proper paintings. These are studies. And what I'm hoping to uh, focus on is values. So getting the relationships between the darks and the lights, right? Most of the stills that I'm working from are actually very muted. And I've noticed this in the last little while doing uh, studies in my sketchbook that I've been picking things that are very um, gray. Like if you made it in black and white, they would be very gray and um, not high in contrast, which is great and everything, but it actually makes it very hard. So if you're new to painting, I would suggest that you start off doing a study from something that has higher contrast. So this first thumbnail worked out pretty well because it was high contrast and so it was easier and I was able to like push the colors a little bit. I should have continued on that vein and pushed the hue or the chroma a little bit more so that I could um to make it easier on myself. Working from film stills or paintings is a great way to practice painting. Um, you can always go ahead and make up your own scene, but working from life or working from a master painting or a film still or a photograph will force you to really learn lights and shadows and how to get values right and, and learn what color does because it's not always what you think. Working from your own head without reference, you'll think you know what the world looks like, but in reality, it's very different. As I was working, I realized that um, I needed to add a sepia for the darks.
So what I've learned during this little exercise is that because this gouache is like acrylic, um, it dries rather quickly and of course it doesn't reactivate. And then if you have wet patches on the palette mixed with this dried paint, you end up getting like this little plastic stringy gucky bits. So I think a way to avoid it is to just put out as much as you need for um, as much as you can use up while you're painting and just keep adding paint as you need it. In the first little thumbnail where we see um, father and Campion going into a hole, I was able to carve out the character with the darkness. So that high contrast works really well and it helps you place things. I've always had a tendency in the past to work from light to dark and I'm trying to like bring the dark in sooner so that I have a reference point for what the dark is. And I think that's very useful so that you know where the middle values lie in, in, in between. Especially with things that are um, all in a mid-tone, you really need to establish the, the darkest and the lightest because the range um, is smaller and the values shift quicker. It's hard to get those relationships right when you're working in an almost monotone palette. On the second one, featuring Paul and his father, it was very ochre and gray. And I had the sun in my eyes and I should have changed uh, positions, but I kind of gave up on this one a little bit. I think I got some of the value relationships right, but um, I was I was getting a little bit frustrated. But in a scene like this, for example, the skin tones aren't really flesh colored. They're gray or maybe warm grays. So, you know, if you were to do this from your head, I think you wouldn't represent it in the way it actually is. This palette is um, very classic in a way, and you could replicate this with um, a yellow ochre and uh, a burnt sienna or an English red and an ultramarine blue. And you could use sepia or black if you needed um, to adjust the darkness. Um, or you could just use primary colors and a black and a white. So the series starts off on an alien planet. I think it's called Kepler-22, if I believe. And uh, you meet these two androids. One's a female, one's a male. And they're called mother and father. And you find out that they were sent on a, like an emergency mission to kind of restart the, the human race because things have gone down on earth and it's kind of like post-apocalyptic there's been a war between these two factions one's uh called the mithraic which is like a religious faction and then the other one are called the other one is called uh the atheists and obviously they they don't get along and uh yeah they've been warring for a while and destroying the earth in the process 
So some scientist dude uh, sends this little vessel with these androids and in their vessel they have six human embryos and their mission is to protect these children at all costs, build a family, and bring them up as atheists and kind of repopulate. Or not, not repopulate, just populate this planet. As the story develops, we find out that the Mithraic also had a ship that they sent to the same planet, and they land there. And, of course, when they encounter bad things happen. <laughs> and um, it's, it's a very surprising series. And like all science fiction, it deals with those big themes of what it means to be human. I think most good science fiction has that at its core. But it also has like a lot of ideas of what it means to be a parent what it means to be religious and family and rivalries and what is alien. Anyways, there's a lot of cool things going on there. A lot of symbolic language. It's surprising. I gotta say, every episode, you just like, you're cut off guard by the things that happen and the way the characters reveal themselves. Everyone is very complicated, and all the versions of mothers that there are are very strange, and all the fathers are also very strange. And there's kind of like this, this hint at an ancient civilization, and almost like perhaps this is where humans come from. In this third thumbnail featuring mother and father discovering one of the dinosaur bones, I added a green because I needed some of these like aqua -y hues. This is also very monotone, but it was leaning more towards like an aquaish color. So I added that to the palette. Because the, the template that I used for these thumbnails wasn't exactly the same um, ratio as the film stills, I kind of like had a break out of this box, but I kind of like it in a way. So I did have to fudge, fudge a little bit. If you want to get it right, you could always like take a little card and put it up to your screen and cut it to the shape of the picture that you're wanting to to study from so that you get the ratio right and then that way when you redraw it you won't make mistakes or you won't have to fudge around with it the way I did. I didn't mind moving things around a little bit because I was going more for value. Like I did want the compositions that's why I picked these but I was really going more for for value with these studies. Because the stringiness was getting annoying and because I felt like maybe colors were getting muddied, I cleaned the palette off and I added small blue to this last little thumbnail. And I added just a little dab of paint. It looks like a tiny amount, but I mean, these little thumbnails are very small and I would just add another little dollop as I needed. So I hope this gave you some ideas on how to use like a classical limited palette and convinced you that you don't need so many colors to do some painting practice. I hope you get out your sketchbooks and practice painting. Look for a reference that inspires you. That always makes the practice 
easier. I'll have the images that I used for reference at the end of the video, so check that if you would like to use them as well. I've been meaning to start updating my blog with some of the supplemental material that I was hoping to give you guys, so I'll try to do that for this video, and um, I have a backlog of things that I need to get to. Let me know if you've seen the show and what you thought of it in the comments below. I'd love to know. So as always, thanks for watching everyone and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this channel and the content and I hope you come back for the next one. Until then, have a great day and I hope I see you soon.